Um, we hadn't realized that it was all working. So there we go. Uh, lesson learned. Next week it'll be very, very different. And it's a different kind of a time, isn't it? I'm down here at church. Jonathan Waterfield's here. Nathaniel, my son, is here. And I'm really grateful, Joe, that you uh, texted through to the studio as it is now, saying, we can see and hear you, while we are all uh, messing around trying to see if you can get the microphones working. For this to work really well today, um, it would be really great if you could grab a Bible. I'm using the NIV. You can use any version you like at home, because I won't be able to hear you. Um, uh, so if you could grab a Bible, that would be great. And if you have a candle that you can safely light, uh, then why don't you grab that as well? Now, if, uh, while you're finding a candle and, and something to light it with while you're grabbing your Bibles, I'm going to ask Nathaniel to go and grab me my glass of water, which I don't know where it is. It's on the table over there. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to just say it's great to see you. Uh, not to see you, great that you can see us, and we look forward to seeing you sometime soon. On this channel, the comments are open underneath, thank you Nathaniel, uh, and if you found your way here by following us on Facebook and following that link, there's a comment section there as well, and in a little while, we'll do some family news, we'll share some of the news, of stuff that's going on in our life together. So if you would like to comment on the Facebook page, we can pick that up while we're here and I can share any family news. So it'd be great to hear about birthdays, accomplishments, and all of that kind of stuff. Friends, we are indeed in a very, very strange season. I want to start with some good news, though, which is that as far as we're aware, nobody in our church family has been diagnosed with coronavirus. A number of people in our church family have had to self-isolate because they've become symptomatic. But as far as we're aware, nobody in our church family has had full-blown coronavirus. It may well be that there are people in your wider family, in your network of friends, and if you're watching from another church, that you know people who have been. And so we want to start with a prayer, and a prayer that God would watch over us, be close to those in our nation who are mourning, and those who are fearful. So let me lead you as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're able to connect together using this technology at this time. And it's new and it's strange and it's novel, and yet the cause of this is something that concerns us all. And Lord, I pray for people who are watching this stream now whose families have been touched by this virus, perhaps even some who are mourning the loss of friends, relatives, associates, or neighbors, that Lord, you'd be close to us all. And that, Lord, you'd keep us in that place of real faith, that we wouldn't fall into fear, but that we would live lives close to you. And in this time that we get to share together now, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us, inspire us, encourage us, remind us that we belong to a family that isn't just gathered when we're in the same building, but is in many houses spread across many nations. Amen. Amen. So hopefully you've had time to find a candle, and if you're part of our church community, you'll recognize this candle. Now I know we have some friends joining us on this stream from Wolverhampton and from Tabernacle Baptist Church, who right now will be a little bit concerned that Jonathan's lighting a candle, and that's because I have a, oh, I have a history there of uh, things going not quite so well with a candle. But if you're part of this church family, you'll recognize this candle. And it's one of the candles that we used at Advent as part of our Advent candle. And this candle that I kept a hold of, for me, the elders have got the other four candles. Um, this candle is the hope candle. And I was thinking of which candle I might want to light today. Uh, and I invite you to light a candle at home now as a sign of hope that light shines. And although we are all in different homes and in different places, as we light this candle now, we all bring light once more into our homes. For me, this candle represents hope. And it represents to me the something of the story of the nativity that Jesus coming into the world brings hope to us all. And my prayer is that as we take a look at this light, we'd have kindled within us once more the warmth of that hope, uh, that some peace, even now, would come into our homes, into our hearts, into our families. And just as we had that fulfilled hope that Jesus would come, and he did, 
so too we pray that there be a fulfillment of our hope that God would watch over us and that we would together see his goodness. Hopefully you've had time to grab a Bible and so I wonder if you would turn with me to Psalm 124. Psalm 124, which is a song of liberation, a song where God's people would sing of his goodness and would speak of the great things that he's done. There was a way of of saying this psalm, and it was done as a kind of a response. As people were heading up towards Jerusalem to worship together, they would sing lots of songs, and this would be one of them. It's a song of the many things that God has delivered them from. I'd like it if we could read it together. If you at home would read this, and even if you're on your own, read it out loud so that your voice echoes with mine in your own home. Let's say together Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger fled against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It's hard for us to worship together so far apart. And uh, it may be in the coming weeks that we're able to incorporate music into this section and we'll be exploring how we might do that. But for us today, saying that psalm together is a short act of worship we can do. At the end of this broadcast, what I'm going to invite you to do is to take a look at a playlist that we've created. You'll find on our YouTube channel later, and I'll tell you where it is, of three songs that will go uh, well following this little gathering here today. So I want to share some family news with you, and uh, let's see if this works. So I'm just going to take a look uh, and see on our Facebook page if there are people who are wanting to share anything there. I'm just having a look to see, and I can't see anything obvious. So if you have family news to share, please do share it on that thread, the one that advertises this service on the, uh, the page. That would be wonderful. There are a few other things that I want to share with you, um, and that is during this time when our children are at home, uh, you may be wondering what you're going to do with them and how you encourage them, and uh, in all sorts of ways what we might be doing that will build up our children. Our friends at the Christian Education Project have put something together called the Rock Up Holiday Club at Home, uh, with material that goes live from tomorrow. So to sign up for that or to find out more information, if you're part of our church family, you can get in touch with Jo Waterfield and she'll give you the information. You could look at the Facebook page for the Christian Education Project and uh, there'll be information there. Or you could email helen at christianeducationproject.org.uk and that's going to be some resources that you can access at home to support uh, your children. Joe also very kindly reminded me that our food banks are still in need and uh, in this time when people have been panic buying and food is in scarce supply, I want to remind you uh, that still our food banks are working hard. And so the, uh, the food bank for Redbridge have asked especially for tinned meat, tinned fish, tinned vegetables, tinned tomatoes, milk, either UHT milk or powdered milk, jam or other spreads, and baby food. My guess is that wherever you're watching this from, uh, the food bank near you would be grateful of those items. So please do think of others. Today is Mother's Day. I haven't forgotten. And if you'd been here, Bethan and I had arranged to uh, get for all of the women in church a copy of Woman Alive, which is a great magazine from our friends at Premier Media. And uh, there's one of these sitting here in the building right now for every lady in church, whether you're a mother or not, we wanted to bless you all. I guess over the next week or so, potentially through our life group networks, we're going to attempt to get these magazines to you. So do uh, watch out through your letterbox. If one of these falls through, 
um, then that's, that's where it's from. It hasn't just suddenly appeared from nowhere. It's from the church. Next Sunday would have been a communion service for us. And uh, it still will be if you're part of our church family. And if you're not, hopefully there'll be ways for you to join in. Uh, through the week, we'll, we'll let you know. For folks living locally, we hope to get to you and to distribute to you an individual communion set. Um, but uh, we're hoping for that, arrival, for that delivery to arrive in the next day or two. If not, uh, and for other people, then by grabbing a hold of some grape juice and some bread, we'll be able to share together in communion next week. Finally, before we consider some scripture together, Every single day uh, through the week at two o'clock, we're going to be doing a Zoom call that will be just open for anybody who's isolated, alone, wants to connect with others just to kind of break out of what's happening that day and to come away from our own thoughts and be alongside other people. Uh, That Zoom call will be um, uh, linked to from our Facebook page and from our Twitter feed each day. Uh, So if you would like to jump on that, it's absolutely free. Uh, Some people are struggling a little bit with the technology. Uh, Some folks are going online, signing up for an account, and then trying to figure out how it works. You don't really need to do that if you're using a laptop or a a PC with a camera. Just click on the link, and it will do it all for you. It'll open up a little window, and it'll take you there. And it's been great to do that. Uh, If you do it on a PC or a laptop, uh, then you'll see more people. You can see everybody who's participating. You can join on a phone or a a smartphone or a tablet. You'll need to download an app from the App Store or your Play Store called Zoom Cloud Messaging. Uh, You will need to log up for that and then log in for that. And then, again, you just follow the link and it'll open up that that app on your your phone or your tablet. You're limited in how many people you can see at once. You'll need to swipe to the side to see who else is there, but it's still worth joining in. I don't think there's anything else. Always notices in church world. But these are really important because they're the ways that we're connecting one with another. Uh, So if you need anything else, if there's something that you wished I'd cover that I hadn't, reach out to us through our Facebook page. Uh, We would be delighted to hear from you. I wanted to read a scripture today uh, because it's Mother's Day and just to reflect for a few moments on that. It's from Isaiah, very well-known words, from Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 13. Uh, and uh, children, if you have children with you, I wonder if you just, if they're kind of, they've wandered off because we've done the notices thing and we've done all of that. Just why don't you draw them closer for a second, get whole families in front of the screen. Uh, because I know that for all of us, we're in a slightly fearful time and uh, we're concerned about who we should spend time with and how close we get to people and where we should go. Some of us in our church family uh, uh, older and frailer. Some of us have pre-existing conditions. I, I'm in that group. I'm immunosuppressed. Uh, and so we're, we're kind of being extra careful and, uh, uh, and we're concerned every little ache or sniffle or whatever we suddenly wander. And it's important that we get a sense of where God is for us in the midst of that and, and who God is and what he's like. And in Isaiah chapter 66, we see these words that reveal a side of God that is really important for us to be aware of at this time. God says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Now, yes, that is a word that God spoke to a particular people at a particular time. But I believe it's a word that God wants to speak to us now. And so children, it's going to be a strange time for you. You're going to be at home or maybe you're going to be at school with fewer people because your parents, your carers are key workers. But for all of us, it's a strange time. And we have all kinds of questions. And inside of us, we might have feelings that we don't really know what they are. We we kind of feel a little bit unsure, maybe a little bit scared. We don't know what's going to happen. And we know that people around us are behaving differently, but we don't know why really. God wants to say to you, children, that he's with you. And in the same way that a mother picks up a child and nurtures and comforts, and I mean, fathers can as well, but today's Mother's Day. In the same way that a parent picks up a child and nurtures and loves and cares, God says that's what he wants to do for you. And so for any of us, young or old, who have a moment where we're feeling unsure, we have an emotional wobble where there's a time when we think, well, where's God in the midst of this? I want to invite all of us just to find a quiet place 
and say, God, would you comfort me? God, would you hold me like a parent, like a mother holds a child? Would you be near to me in this moment when I'm feeling unsure, when I'm feeling scared, when I don't know what's happening and when I have questions? Of course, children and grown-ups, you can ask for a hug from somebody as well. This is a good season for asking from a hug from a family friend, uh, sorry, from a member of your family, not your friends, um, because we need to stay distant. But from our families, it's a good time to hold each other and to see that comfort that comes from physical touch at a time when we're being encouraged to distance from others. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. And whether you're young or whether you're old, I want you to hear those words from God to you today. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Well, I want us to do one thing that seems a little bit strange, but uh, hopefully won't be too strange. When we pray for our children and when we pray for each other here in this church, and perhaps in the church that you're part of if you're not part of this church, we reach out our hands towards the person we're praying for. It's a kind of a symbol and a sign. It's not like we're not using the force. You know, it's not like the force goes out for me. It's nothing like that. But it's just a kind of a direction. God, would you bless that person? And in, in the reaching out of our hands, we're kind of saying, God, would you extend your hand of blessing towards them? And here's the weird thing. We're all separated. We're in our homes. There's three of us here in church. I don't know how many are in your building. Maybe you're on your own right now, and I guess many people will be from different churches. I want to give us a moment where it feels like we're connecting. And so this is going to be strange, but here's what I want you to do. In a moment, I'm going to walk towards the screen. I'm going to invite you to reach out and to touch the screen, to physically touch it, and to know in that moment that there are others around who are touching that screen. And as you feel that pressure against the screen, I want you to use some creative, godly imagination and imagine all of our hands being pressed together in that moment. And then uh, we're gonna, I'll say a little prayer and then I'm going to give us a closing prayer to say together. So I want you to reach out and to touch your screen wherever you are, just to reach out and touch the screen. And Father, in this moment of contact, even though we're distant from one another, we feel that screen pressing against our hands and know that our family of church friends, relatives, associates and neighbors are doing the same. And somehow in this moment of connection, Lord, I pray that you'd remind us that we're not alone and that you're with us always and that we are part of a big family. And so let this, Lord, be a time when we find creative ways of connecting, communicating, blessing and serving, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So hopefully you've still got your Bible handy. I wonder if you'd turn with me to Numbers uh, chapter 6, and we're going to use uh, a blessing that is in there as a way of blessing one another as this time comes to a close. Uh, this is a blessing that has been used by the people of God for three and a half thousand years. These are words that God gave to Moses and said we should use them to bless one another. After we've said this blessing, and I'm saying it to you, and we're going to say it in our families, and this is our prayer for all of those who are watching this live stream. We're praying for you. We're praying for each other. As you pray this prayer where you are, you're praying for everybody else watching. After we've prayed this prayer, I want to encourage you to, because this feed will close, to look at the channel so that's our YouTube channel, Woodford Baptist Church. And as you look at the channel, uh, one of the options will be the word playlist. If you click that word playlist, there should just be one file that will appear. And that is three songs that I've selected that will last, I don't know, maybe 15, 17 minutes, something like that altogether, as a way of us worshipping together at home. There's a song that our children will know, and then two other songs that will help us to worship just where we are at home. Um, so find that playlist, click on that, and just watch and listen to those three songs as we draw this time to a close. Turn with me then to Numbers chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 24, 25, and 26 together as a prayer over all of us as we draw our time together to a close. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.